Forget Netflix and chill. In today's funny story joke, it's Bible stories and cackle. That's right, we're diving into the life of Delilah, the OG hairstylist with a side hustle in betrayal. But before we spill the tea, or should I say Philistine wine, let's brush up on a little history that's more dramatic than your grandma's soap opera collection. So, there once was this dude named Samson. Think Popeye on steroids, the kind of guy who could floss his teeth with barbed wire. Now, Samson had a secret weapon, his hair. It wasn't like luscious locks flowing in the breeze. No, it was more like a giant hairy chia pet growing on his head. But hey, it held the key to his superhuman strength. So who was he to judge? Enter Delilah, a woman with a smile that could melt glaciers and a heart colder than a penguin's belly button. She was working for Samson's arch enemies, the Philistines, who saw Samson as a walking, hairy wrecking ball to their sandcastle empires. Delilah set her sights on Samson, batting her eyelashes like feathery windshield wipers. Samson, bless his naive heart, was smitten faster than a moth to a disco ball. Night after night, Delilah would ply Samson with compliments and gourmet protein shakes. Gotta keep those muscles fueled. All the while, she'd be casually dropping hints about his strength like, wow, Samson, you're so strong. Is it like a special hair gel you use? Samson, as dense as a brick, wrapped in another brick, never suspected a thing. Finally, after weeks of relentless eyelash batting and protein shakes, seriously, the man was starting to look like a walking protein bar. Delilah sprung the trap. She threw Samson a dinner party so lavish it made a Roman emperor blush. Wine flowed like a broken fire hydrant, and Samson, feeling a little woozy, thanks to a special protein shake, started spilling secrets like a leaky faucet. It's my hair, Delilah, Samson bellowed, dramatically pointing at his chia pet head. These luscious locks hold the key to my strength. Delilah, internally doing a victory dance that would make Beyonce jealous, feigned surprise. Oh, Samson, really? That's interesting, she said, her voice dripping with sugar and betrayal. Later that night, as Samson snored like a grizzly bear with a head cold, Delilah snuck in with a pair of rusty nail clippers she borrowed from the Philistine janitor. Let's just say those clippers weren't designed for industrial strength chia pet removal. It wasn't pretty, but with a few snips and a lot of sweat, Delilah relieved Samson of his hairy power source. The next morning, Samson woke up feeling like a deflated air mattress. He went to flex his biceps, but all he got was a pathetic wiggle. The Philistines stormed in, ready to capture their weakened foe. Samson, feeling like a fool who got outsmarted by a rusty nail clipper, could only stare in disbelief. But wait, just as the Philistines were about to haul him off, Delilah stepped forward. Oh, those silly Philistines, she scoffed. Don't they know real strength comes from the heart? Besides, she leaned in conspiratorially. Samson still has his eyebrows. Maybe that's where the real power lies? The Philistines, thoroughly confused and slightly terrified of a woman wielding rusty nail clippers, froze. Samson, catching on, winked at Delilah. Maybe she wasn't so bad after all. Maybe they could team up and create some real chaos for the Philistines. After all, who wouldn't underestimate a woman with a rusty nail clipper and a mischievous glint in her eye? All right, all right, history nap time is over. Those textbooks can go back to collecting dust next to Samson's hairpiece. Let's get down to brass tacks, or should I say, weave extensions, because this Delilah story is about to get wilder than a bad perm in a hurricane. In the quaint town of Hope Springs Eternal, the first church of perpetual bachelordom boasted the most devout congregation this side of the Mississippi. Their motto? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, especially if you're already married to her. Strict? Absolutely. But these men cherished their independence, their fishing buddies, and their Sunday morning potlucks, heavy on the sausage rolls. Then, disaster arrived in the form of a black-headed bombshell named Delilah, Think Jessica Rabbit meets Dolly Parton on a bender. 
heads swiveled faster than a sprinkler on high pressure. Delilah, bless her manipulative heart, batted her eyelashes with the grace of a hummingbird and purred like a kitten with a full belly of cream. Soon, divorce papers were flying faster than gossip at a bingo night. One by one, the once faithful filled the pews less and the offering plate more closely resembled a thimble. Pastor Miller, a man whose beard rivaled Moses, saw his congregation dwindle faster than a birthday cake at a toddler party. Panic bloomed on his rosy cheeks like a rogue tomato in his victory garden. Desperate times called for desperate measures. So, Pastor Miller, armed with a hymnal and a surprising amount of desperation, marched over to Delilah's doorstep. Now, the good pastor had never dealt with anything more flirtatious than a rogue squirrel after a donation of stale nuts. This was going to be interesting. The pastor and his chief elder are sent by the church council to visit Delilah in the congregation in an attempt to get her back on the narrow road. She has led many a brother into temptation so that he stumbles, falls, and remains lying. When they sat down across from her, it is clear that you have to be a strong man to understand this. Delilah. She has long, slender legs, and she wears such a short miniskirt that she could almost have left it on. Clearly, she has also worked on her assets because she is so witty that gravity has no hold on her at all. The elder tries to ignore it, but still the text from the Song of Songs comes to mind about the fat lambs that graze among the white lilies. As a mitigating circumstance, she at least has a pendant with an herb around her neck, but the herb plays hide-and-seek among those gooey lambs. The pastor notices his brother here beside him, swallows nervously, and stares at the woman, hypnotized like a little feeler by a cunning snake. Brother, are your eyes fixed on the cross? He admonished, I'm trying, Reverend, muttered the elder. But the two murderers, on either side of the cross, have me in their sights. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.